All right, let's talk about hybrid immunity. So natural immunity from an infection and then combine that with the immunity that you get from a vaccine. And from what I've been reading, it appears that the result is really a stronger protection than just, you know, infection or vaccination alone. Yeah, now this is a great topic because this comes up all the time. You know, a person's had COVID before. Dr. Griffin, I've already had COVID. Why do I have to get this vaccine? And what we're learning is that a person who had a prior infection who gets vaccinated really has this superpower. And there was this great research done um, recently here in New York, Paul Binaz at the Rockefeller. Um, it's out as preprint. We've all had a chance to look at it and he's an excellent researcher. And what he, what he, what his group did is they said, you know, I keep hearing about all these changes in the spike protein. Um, you know, what's next? Are they eventually gonna be able to break through? And what they saw was, okay, if you've had infection before, these mutations can break through. But if you had infection before and then get vaccinated, you now have robust protection against all the variants out there. If you decide not to get vaccinated from another study, um, you're twice as likely to get reinfected as a person who steps up and gets that vaccination. So boy, people who got it before who then get vaccinated, you have superpowers. This is a great level of protection. Now, what about the other, those of us who've been vaccinated who get exposed to a natural infection? We haven't done that study yet, but it's looking like maybe this is the idea behind the boosters. That third exposure may be what it really takes to get that immune system to the point where the virus can't beat us with those variants. And we know at the end of this week, they're going to be having that meeting about those booster shots. So do you think that, you know, this is going to be moving ahead and that's what we're trending toward? Um, I think there's inertia there. I think we're moving in that direction, um, but it's a challenge because we don't have the science yet. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of studies out there. Um, we do have studies showing that it's safe um, in these smaller numbers. As we roll it out, we'll continue to get more safety data. So that's number one. Is it safe to get a third shot? And so far, it looks like yes. Um, does it benefit? Right, boy. If the first two didn't do to, didn't get the job done, does the third do it? We don't quite know yet. We just have some data on antibody levels. Um, but that data is coming soon. Will that third shot make a difference? Will our friend Paul Binaz be able to repeat these experiments when you've got two shots, then a third? Um, and we're really looking forward to that guidance. All right, I want to just touch on for, for a moment here, memory B cells and what they do um, and, and kind of how this will work when it comes in, uh, in terms of the virus variants, because, uh, you know, how our, how our body will be able to figure out how to fight whatever's next. Now, this, this is a, a great, and I think that people are much more sophisticated, right? Two years ago, did anyone know much about T and B cells and memory B cells? Now we all do. It's what we talk about, you know, around the breakfast or the dinner table, um, is the the T cells we think are really critical in protecting us against serious disease, but the B cells are right up front making these antibodies. And the B cells, they remember, they're differentiated into these B memory cells. And over time, those B memory cells keep refining a little bit about the antibodies they make. And so what's happening here with these memory B cells is you get one shot, and you get a certain number of memory B cells. You get a second shot, you got a broader repertoire of memory B cells. Maybe with that third shot, we'll get even more. But those memory B cells, even as the antibodies go down, they remember and they're ready to jump in and crank up those antibody levels again. You know, I thought it was interesting that the city of San Francisco decided to offer a Moderna or Pfizer booster shot to people who got J&J. &J. They started doing this just about a month ago. And I wonder when we, when we think about the science behind it, these are two very different vaccines. And do you think that that's something that we could see here in the tri-state area coming soon for people who got J&J? &J? I mean, I think this is really interesting and important research that they're doing. Um, the vaccines work a little bit differently, right? We think of our mRNA vaccines, our Moderna, our Pfizer as being really good at getting those B cells to crank out the antibodies. We think of the J&J &J maybe having a little advantage with the T cells. So what if you bring those together, right? Currently, people with J&J &J are like, hey, how come I got the J&J? &J? I want the good stuff. Um, first, reassuring, the J&J &J actually looks like it's doing better against the Delta than it was doing against the Beta or the Gamma. So that's one thing. But can we do even better? Can we give those J&J &J folks the mRNA vaccine, take the T cells that they have, complement them with a better B cell response? And I think this is really exciting research and that that's going to really guide us because what is the best thing for a J&J &J recipient to do? Hold steady and see? 
get another J and J, go ahead and get a Moderna shot. And all that research, all that information is going to be coming in just the next few months, ready for us to make those decisions. All right.